Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Johan Granberg, and um, yeah, I yeah, you tell me that I took seven courses at SSES. Uh, yeah, I guess I did uh, because I think actually I was thinking back at it, and I, most of the courses that I really remember were SSES courses. Good. That's yeah, so that's very good. Anyway, I. Um, I had uh, started, started marketing at SSS, uh, the Stockholm School of Economics. And I am now the CEO of a company called The World Beneath, which is a uh, communications, uh, consumer communications company. That's one part of what I do. I'm also on, on the board of a diff on another company that I was involved in starting, which is called Vice, which is a media company. Um, and I'm going to very, I mean, we have 20 minutes for this kind of entrepreneurial story. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. I'm just going to start out with a little kind of our, our uh, entrepreneurial story or timeline. I mean, like, like you said, I was kind of a, I've been kind of a serial entrepreneur. We started, I think, maybe seven companies. There's two that still are alive today. Uh, but anyway, today I'm CEO of, uh, the, of A World Beneath and we are 12 people working uh, in uh, one office. Um, Vice, the other company that, was, uh, that I started, employs 13 and has an office in Stockholm and one in Copenhagen at the moment. So World Beneath is a strategic consumer communications agency. Uh, Vice is uh, a part of a global group, uh, a media company. And I will show you a little bit more about the companies. And this is for a world. This, this is some of the, cl the clients that we work with today when we're a consultancy. So here's a few of our clients that we work with. Anyway, so I started at uh, Handels in '97. So and already in '99, I thought uh, that I was uh, fit to start my first company, which is call called Mama. And I did that together with two friends, two guys that actually were not studying at Handels. They were both uh, mark, uh, studying at Marknads uh, Akademin um, at Stockholm University. And uh, we saw this great niche market that was consumer insights in uh, young people, or actually young people consumer insights. Great business idea. We thought, we thought that we should help big co companies to understand young people better. So we started a company that sold that kind of services. It was called Mama, marketing management. And uh, it didn't work at all. Complete failure. We had to shut down after, I don't know, eight months maybe. Um, I went back to school. My two uh, partners, they both went back to school as well. Uh, three months later, we got our biggest client, which was MTV. And well, hey, we're back in business. Uh, so we had that company we ran from, we started in 99, and then there's like a f death thing here, and then we restarted again. Um, and the, and so the de death symbol is when a company dies. Right, so just to kind of illustrate the fact that companies such we, we start them and they die as well. It's part of the of the thing. Um, then we started a clothing store uh, in 2001, which was called Beneath, uh, which we had great plans for, which is another great idea, and uh, yeah, we worked a lot with it. And it died in 2007. In 2003, we started A World Beneath, the PR agency. They have a better business idea, great. And it's actually still alive. 2004, we started a company called Vice, which is also still alive. Okay. I've prepared a little 
film that's kind of illustrates what we do at the world beneath. This is a case film. To launch the classic N98 track jacket. We needed to connect Nike's heritage and football with fashion and style influencers in Northern Europe. So we created activation that enabled creative people to feel inspired and express themselves through football. We invited 12 teams consisting of some of Northern Europe's most interesting photographers, designers, musicians, retailers, gallery owners and media personalities. Each team created their own crest and the result was amazing. They were then invited to battle it out on the pitch in a seven-a-side tournament. And to complement the event in true Nike sportswear fashion, we created seven inspirational and creative sessions on and off pitch. And we named the event Stockholm 7. Together with renowned British art director Ben Drury, we meshed football with Stockholm through a killer handcrafted logo, posters, invites and tons of other creatively inspired material. Using Facebook was a no-brainer, since that's where this group connects. So, in the innovative spirit of Nike, we used Facebook as the epicenter for our online activity for the first time. We created hype through an exclusive PR initiative that drilled into other social networks and digital media. And we also worked together with the best Nike sportswear retailers in Sweden and created a limited edition Stockholm 7 N98 pack just for these stores, which sold out in a day. Teams created their own content, and retailers were even buying their own media to support the tournament. In the offline world, we built an amazing space in true Nike sportswear style. And on the 6th of June, the teams battled it out at the first ever Stockholm 7 session. And this is what happened. Despite the creative energy of the event, it quickly became competitive once the teams took to the field. Photographer Nicholas Haggard captured the action and all the pictures were immediately available on the Facebook tab. More than 1,800 people attended the event. And afterwards, hundreds of people wrote about the campaign. Articles and blogs focused on it. And web traffic was off the hook. And we've truly connected with the style influencers in Stockholm. Okay, so this is uh, our product basically. This is what we do in uh, the world beneath. So, so this is we're you know 13, 12, 13 people that work every day and do these kind of things. Okay, so again, this is basically what we do. This is our business idea. This, we sell these kind of services to big brands in, uh, in Sweden and Northern Europe. So that's one part of what we do. Then the other company that I, was, that I, that I started, Vice, I have another little short case film for Vice what they do. Started 15 and this years is ago in that company's Canada. story. We quickly became the coolest magazine in the country, but that's like being the coolest magazine in Kansas. We're being read in New York and London, though, and then we got the attention of a crazy nudist billionaire who brought us down to Manhattan for the dot-com revolution. That quickly fizzled out, as did our crazy nudist billionaire. So we moved to Brooklyn, got back to our punk roots, and started global expansion. First we went to England, then to Japan, Scandinavia, Germany, and soon we were in 30 countries. The thing about being in 30 countries is that's a lot of content. We now have 2,500 contributors around the world sending stuff in every month.
VBS. It's an online television network, but it's not TV. VBS is music, it's culture, and it's news. We're coming back with the stuff that nobody else has. We're putting it up online. We followed the only heavy metal band in Baghdad. We went to Bolivia. We went to the Philippines. I went to Sudan and snuck into Darfur. We're going to North Korea. We're going all over the place. We're doing music in a different way, like going to the band's practice space, or we have a show called Soft Focus, interviewing bands, much like inside the actor's studio, but punk. Let's do bands that matter. Let's do the bands you won't see on MTV. But we also do culture. We do Epically Latered, which is a skateboarding show where we follow the skateboarders that the kids really want to see. We shoot it, we cut it, it's up the next day. So there's an immediacy there that you can't get on any other media. It's democracy in action, it's grassroots. Viva la revolution. Okay, so that's the other company that I started, which is called Vice. Oi, now hop over the other helt. which is also still there. So wh the, what we do there is we create content across many different platforms and we, uh, we package and we sell it to advertisers, basically. It's a very simple business idea. And we do that in Scandinavia. So five countries, again, with two offices. I can actu actually came with three questions, or I, I came with something I actually wanted to, to discuss with you because <coughs> like I said, we started d many different companies and in the, f in the role that I have, which is a uh, communications consultant, I get a lot of new started companies that come to me and want to have our help to put them in the market. And also I was thinking about how it was when I took SSAS courses. I was thinking, you know, what was the perspective when you got into a course? I was, I actually, I was kind of, I was always thinking about running a company. I think, when I, when I look back at it. I mean, how many of you want to start a company here? It's, it's like 60 percent. Um, and then th there's this big thing that kind of is this ongoing discussion with companies or people that come to me, which is something I would like to discuss with you. And it starts with, with this. Because basically, I have a lot of people coming to me with a thing, with a, you know, a, you know I don't know, it could be a, a car, a new type of car, or it could be a t-shirt, or uh, what else people come with me? The snooze or a lot of things. Or sometimes they come with me to me with a new solution. That's also happened. Like a we have this great web idea. So basically, they come to me with a product innovation of some sort. S sometimes people come to us and say, we have this great brand idea. We have this great idea for, you know, we... There's been a lot of startup, startups within, within fashion, for instance, the last couple of years. A lot of people come to us and say, ah, we want to do this brand, it's like this, and it's this, or this are the consumers, and you know, we're going to sell in all these stores. And I have never, actually, it's never happened that someone came to me and said, I have the best business idea. I have this great setup. I know exactly what I'm going to sell. I know exactly how I'm going to distribute it. I know exactly how I'm going to finance it. I know what I'm going to produce and I know how. And I know how I'm going to run my human resources department. And I know what's going to happen. Uh, I have my lawyer set up, done. I have a policy for how I'm going to sign my deals. I'm going to get super rich. That has never happened once. So I, I had this, we were at uh, Beckmans uh, once for, two, for the design college. And uh, they asked us to come and uh, 
to talk uh, to their designers and their commu communicators about creative marketing and alternative marketing. Um, because there were so many people in that room that wanted to start companies, they thought. And uh, we got a lot of questions from people from, for instance, Beckmas doing design that wanted to start labels, as it's called in fashion. We want to start our own label. And then we talked to them. Actually, what they were really disappointed, thought we were really boring. Uh, what we talked about basically was, OK, uh, don't do marketing at all. Don't waste your time thinking about funny, interesting ways of marketing. Do a business model, you know? Think it through properly, see what you can do. Is it even a business? Is this even a business? Or is it just like, you know, maybe it's just a pr product, it's a, it's a gimmick, or is it actually a business? Mm 